Hey, this is Jonathan Hellhouse from Oh the Horror, and you're watching the Brutally Delicious Podcast. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm uh, just chilling in my little quarantine box over here. Yeah, that sucks. How you holding up out there? Uh, it's it's rough. We're in California, so everything sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in I'm in Virginia and Richmond, and it's well, not as bad as California. And I guess we don't have a governor kind of like yours, so it's not terrible, but it's bad nonetheless. Yeah, I don't know, I I don't really... know that. It really for those not familiar. With Oh the Horror, can you give us the brief two sentence boardroom pitch? Uh, let's see. We're a three piece horrorcore metal outfit uh, from Sacramento, California, and uh, we like to put on a good show. And how are you dealing with the, I guess, the current world situation pandemic, considering we can't all be out on the road touring? Are you guys uh, taking the time to write new music and do that sort of thing? Uh or Absolutely. We completely, like, we didn't stop at all. We just worked twice as hard, honestly. We got a lot of music in the can. It's all about to come out. Uh, lots of new stuff's coming out this year and hopefully next year. Uh, but I, I know we got at least two to three albums worth of music we're, we're working on right now that's almost done. Really? Any kind of time frame as far as release dates? Uh, I know the first single off the new album will be out this month. Uh or early next month. Wait, and so are you guys going to do any kind of live stream or any kind of sort of thing like that to keep up with without being able to tour? Um, how do you plan on promoting, I guess, how do you plan on promoting the record in the, in the time of this? Uh, we, def we just uh, did Attack of the Ninjas with uh, Twisted and all of them. Uh, so we did a digital right. concert that way. We have right. our own that we're uh, playing our current album that came out uh, last July. Uh, Halloween 365, uh, we're playing that front to back. That'll be out in uh, February 12th. We're doing that through uh, Live From events. Uh, so we got that going. And then I'm sure uh, once this album drops uh, and all the music videos are done, we'll be probably playing this one all the way through front to back as well. So you guys are not slowing down and letting the pandemic Absolutely. get the best. I mean, you're still doing the live streams. How was the, what was the response to the 365 one? Pretty good? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of people that were confused, and then there was a lot of people that got it. I was like, it's definitely not for everybody. Uh, we like to experiment a little too much. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, that's not a bad thing either, right? Because you get too much of the same stuff, and it's... Exactly. Redundant, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that's pretty much the main goal for us as a... Like, I, I know I said, like, we're like a horror metal outfit, but we, we completely... We're constantly, like, mixing that main bass with other genres, like constantly. Pop music, uh, rock, punk, whatever we can, make, add it to the pot. <laughs> so what does a Oh The Horror show look like then as far as crowd-wise, if you are if you got that mix of a genre? Uh, it's it's a mix of people, honestly. A lot of people, like, they have their favorite songs where, and then the rest of the album they don't like, so they show up, they, they hang out, they listen to the songs they like, and then they get in and they get out. <laughs> Right, so they just mix, going back and forth. Are you getting a, because you're doing a multiple genre kind of thing, are you getting like different generations of fans too, like everyone from the kids to the their parents, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. We've noticed that a lot. I, it was kind of, it's strange. Like, like uh, I've met kids that were super into us and then their dad shows up and they're like, oh, I love you too. And it's, right. it's yeah, it's, it's all over the board. Everything's all over the board for us. Did that feel strange at all? Or, I mean, it's just a just an audience? At uh, first, it felt kind of strange. I don't know. Because, like, like growing up, like, I've been doing music since I was, like, 14. So, like, usually it was people my age or, or younger that were into what I was doing. And now right. it's it's a much broader spectrum than it was prior. Yeah, I mean, I know I go to show. Well, before all this shit happened, going to shows, it would be me, you know, being in my 50s. And then everybody, I'm taking my son. And they're still listening yeah. to that same kind of music and it seems to work pretty well. And I think that's pretty cool that it's carrying on from, you know, generation to generation. Yeah. It's amazing. How are you guys writing all your music? Are you taking well, in this pandemic, are you able to get together and write like in a rehearsal room or are you taking advantage of technology? Uh, a little bit of both, uh, mostly together. Uh, 
uh, we write music backwards, so a lot of it starts with uh, me coming up with all the vocals ahead of time. And then uh, my guitarist and uh, clean singer producer, Grady Finch, uh, he, I hand all, all my pieces into him. And then we sit in the room together and then we can like, just start mashing Lego pieces together until we find something that we're really happy with. Uh, and then uh, our rhythm guitarist, Jeremy, comes in and picks it apart one last time to make sure that everything's the way it needs to be. And then it's out to the masses. <laughs> That's perfect. But are you guys, when you're writing, are you writing, obviously very theatrical, so are you writing with the stage show in mind, or are you writing a song just for the song's sake? Uh, both. It just uh, depends on what what the, the what I was working on at that point, because we have a an underlying story we're building uh, with our, like, the Super Devil and all these, uh, like, puppets and stuff we've come up with, and then we're adding to the stage show now uh, before we... Uh, got hit with the COVID, we started Im implementing these like toilet paper roll launchers and stuff that we were launching into the crowd and stuff like that. So like everything, everything is about the show, but it doesn't have to be. Some of it's just like, this is a great song concept. Uh, the melody is great. We're, we're going to put this on the record. And is there, a, I mean, obviously there's a theme behind it, but is there a, something you want your fans to take away from? after listening to an Oh the Horror record or seeing a show, or is it just having a good time? Uh, mostly having a good time, but I think a lot of people can take away, like like I said, like we're, we're, we do pop songs, like we've worked on a few pop songs, but we, we look like this. <laughs> uh, so like, you don't have to limit yourself in any way. Uh, like if, you, if you're doing a horror band and you have this great love song, fucking put it out, you know? Like it, you don't have to hold back. And, and I think that can apply to life in general. Are there any horror stories, uh, pardon the pun, of onstage incidents that have occurred during that, using that theatric kind of stuff, or is that not a thing? Uh, not usually, not, not the theatrics themselves, uh, mostly the technology. Uh, like a lot of our, our music is backing tracks because we don't have a live drummer, we don't have bass. Uh, it's just two guitars and then me doing vocals, and then the other guys do background vocals as well. Uh, Grady does most of the clean singing now. Um, but like I've had the laptop crap out like right before we go on stage or I've had like, uh, I used to have my laptop, like tell me when something popped up, it would like read it out loud. And that's happened on stage a couple of times where like in the middle of the set, you just hear like Siri, just like, da, 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 da. <laughs> and like stuff like that. We've had that, but nothing, nothing to do to the theatrics now. Awesome. Um, so what do you have planned? I know you said you're got three records worth of stuff to go here. Um, are you going to release three, the full three records, or are you just going to bump singles? Or how are you going to do that? Because there's a new model, right? In the music business, most people are releasing just singles. Yeah, uh, I think we're going the single route for right now. Um, but you will definitely get a collection of, of the album uh, also. Because I'm an old school guy, and you know, I grew up listening to the record and listening to the way people sequence it. Because there was an art in sequencing and doing all of that stuff. Yep, absolutely. lost now. You know, with kids like... People, kids like my kids' generation, they're just give me one song, and that's all I want to do is add it to my playlist. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the model now. Um, I, I agree with you. I, I'm I'm uh, buy the album, or or if I'm streaming it, either way. I, if I, if a new album comes out and that's an artist I really enjoy, I run it from front to back a couple times before I start picking out my favorite songs. Right, right, right. And even you know when I was growing up, it, the artwork was important. I wanted to know where it was recorded, who the musicians were, all that kind. Even who they thanked, as silly as that sounds. But that's all yeah. kind of gone now. Yeah, it's gone now. But I, th I think if if everyone like merges the two, like because everyone's doing the singles only. Uh, but I feel like you can still do the singles and then have it lead up to the record itself. I don't understand like just right. being like here's one song a month. If that some of these artists are just dropping them out like one or like one every two to three months yes uh if that and it bothers the hell out of me because a lot of these artists i i, I love to death and i just want to hear more right and they're not giving it to me in the at the speed i like binge listening to stuff right and i get it i mean you have to make money and nobody's or not nobody but the majority of kids are not buying full records so i get the the idea but i agree with you as well i think you need the whole thing or I want the whole thing so I can just listen to it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> so we don't have a crystal ball, but where do you see the music business coming out of at the end of this? Cause it's going to have to reinvent itself. Right. 
Uh, it'll probably have to reinvent itself, but I think, honestly, uh, the entertainment industry as a whole will be a lot stronger because people are just kind of getting starved of being entertained and going out and being able to see some kind of show. Uh, everyone in my, like, circle is a go out and, like, go to the theater, go go see the play, right. go see the band live. Like, everyone in my entire vicinity, that's what we do. And we're all just sitting here waiting for it to finally let go so we can all just lose our minds over it sure. and just go all out. Do you think, though, that there's going to be – every band wants to get back out and play. Do you think there's going to be, like, a flood then? Absolutely. I absolutely think that I have this conversation all the time. I think it's going to be oversaturated immediately. Everyone's going to want to be on tour, and there's not going to be places for you to play because it's so backed up. And I people aren't going to have the that. money to see those shows because you can't go see all those shows. You right? can't see everything. Yeah. It's right. just, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big boom and it's going to be really hard. It's going to be, it's, I think it's going to go back to being like, like old school, like punk shows where you're doing it in somebody's living room and you're right. still house in their shows. house. Right. Yeah. It's going to be sick. I, I feel like is if everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing and how to get around it, I, a lot of the newer artists I don't think are going to do as well as the other ones because they don't know how to, like, scrub something together. Right. Uh, I was like, because if we can't get into a venue, I'll, I'll pack out my mom's house. <laughs> right, because you, well, you're playing, but that's different, though, because I think people like you and other bands like you, you're playing for the love of playing, not, True. For, not for just being, because somebody who will play a house show is somebody who's playing for the love of playing, not just to, I'm in a rock band sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. You'll play to five people. Yeah, I'll play. I'll play to just my parents in the front row. That's fine. As long as I'm on there and I'm I'm showing off what I built, I don't I don't mind at all. <laughs> but let me ask you a question, and I probably know the answer, but people listening may not. Is a show a show for you? So whether there's your mom and dad in the front row and that's it, or ten thousand people, is it the same show? Or do you prepare differently? Or oh, same show's a show, man. Uh, if, if whether there's one or a thousand people in front of me, I'm giving my all. I'm rolling on the floor. I'm on the stage. I'm in the crowd. Whatever, whatever. I'm just there to have a good time. If, if anything, if uh, there's less people there, I'd probably go harder for less people than I would for more people. Really? Yeah, honestly. That's interesting. Because I, I mean, I know you, when we get back to this, you may be playing house shows. I was just curious if you know you prepare differently, or if it feels differently that, or if, you know, indeed, a show is a show. Show, shows a show usually uh, uh, I would say like a larger show uh, I'd, I'd be a little more conscious of like how I was doing everything versus like a smaller show I feel it's more intimate and I can be a little more loose with it and then just like be over the top with the performance because there's less people to judge me I guess <laughs> right would you be okay you said you would play house shows but how would you be able to scale back your your show you'd have to just you'd bare bones it and still put on an oh the horror show uh, yeah, I could bare bones it, but honestly, uh, we've built our entire like live show to be like tourable in like a Honda Accord. <laughs> like, really? Uh, yeah, we don't use amps. We go straight in. Everything's direct in. So literally, we need like four lines for a PA system to operate, and then we usually run like a an LE. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, LCD TV and our our puppets and the Super Devil and stuff like that talk on it in between shows and. I can grab my little toilet paper gun, no problem, for a house show. Uh, now, I guess you said you have no drummer, so that's probably the, the biggest thing is the drummers. Are you using, like, Kemper modeler amps and stuff? Uh, something like that, yeah. I, I'm, that's, that's not my forte. I don't, I'm not the guitar guy. They, no, they've, no, got, like, some, they've got some fancy amp modeler pedals with right. all kinds of crazy stuff in there, all that magic. That makes it easy to travel in a Honda Accord then. You don't need the yeah. Uh, I was like, he throws four guitars and two or three pedal boards. I use a lot of vocal effects, uh, but that you could fill the trunk with just the gear and still have room for backpacks and clothes and everything. And then the three of us in, in the car, we're chilling. That's awesome. Are you guys mixing and mastering your stuff yourself as well, or you? Oh uh, uh, yeah. You do yeah, everything we're doing is is in house. Nobody touches all the horror, but all the horror. <laughs> what about production wise? You have a producer, or you guys produce it yourself as well? Uh, Grady, uh, like I said, uh, my guitar, uh, he's our lead guitarist, uh, right. clean singer and producer. He's doing everything. So literally once I'm done demoing my vocals and getting the whole concept of the songs done, I go in with Grady and we sit down and we use Reason and a few other 
uh, DAWs, and we just sit down, we grind it up, and then we mix, master it, and then it's done. That's pretty cool. All in-house and all, all your own, so you don't have to give up any control to anybody. No, not really. That's pretty awesome. Um, if fans want to get a hold of you, where do they find you? Uh, you can find us at, at oh, the Horror Squad on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook. Uh, Twitter, we are oh, uh, oh, the Horror 916 And then uh, you can find us anywhere. Welcome to the Underground as well. And are you pretty active social media-wise? Uh, yeah, all the time. We have our own podcast called The Live Stream. We go live every Sunday around 6.20 p.m. PST. And uh, we talk about horror movies and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Any kind of playing involved or just uh, just talking? Uh, just a podcast. We just uh, riff, riff on the, like old movie trailers and stuff like that. And uh, so that's, it's pretty much the show. <laughs> so, so music aside, what's your favorite horror movie of all time? All time is the Evil Dead franchise. Any anything in that franchise, I'm all about it. Uh, close second would be a uh, Scream. Big fan of Scream. Nice. What about R.I.P. Like, Wes Craven? What about yeah? I like Wes Craven as well. Like Serpent in the Rainbow is one of my favorites. That old it's brutal. What about the uh, like the 40s kind of or or the 30s and 40s kind of horror movies? You guys like those as well or no? It's talking like uh, like Bella old Lugosi. school Universal yeah, monsters. Yeah. yeah. Hammer films. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm into all that stuff. I'm big into like the cheesy stuff as well, mostly the cheesy stuff. So I'm, I'm big into like Full Moon, so like Puppet Master, Killjoy, e- yeah, yeah. Evil Bong, and then like Trauma, Toxic Avenger, uh, Poultry Geist, all that stuff. That's pretty cool. Anything else I missed that you, uh, you want to mention? Uh, I think we're good. Uh, just make sure everyone uh, gets ready for February 12th. We'll be going live on Live From, and uh, we're playing the whole Halloween 365 album front to back, and we played it with a live drummer, so it'll be different for once. It'll be really cool. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Uh